in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this when god wants to lift a man he occasions a season when that season comes the line suddenly begins to fall for you in pleasant places the way season works is that you don't even need to do anything all you need to do is to be aligned and the lines are just falling in pleasant places look at isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 a prophet rose up and said a virgin shall give birth he didn't call anybody's name a virgin shall give birth he just spoke something and created a futuristic season a virgin shall give birth she shall bear a son his name shall be called emmanuel and people were walking through time until that season came the moment that season came an angel was sent from heaven and the angel traced a young virgin and said hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed are thou among women it's not because she was doing anything special she was just aligned and because she was aligned and her name was mentioned in the high heavens she suddenly became a wonder see what mary said about herself in luke 1 48 i'm showing you how men are lifted and there is something i will teach you here to help you not to miss your season he said for he had regarded the low estate of his handmaiden for behold from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed she never had the title of an apostle she just aligned to a prophetic season and immediately something changed forever that made her to become a blessing for all generation how you know the problem with many christians they miss their seasons they lose the cycles of their destiny and so a door opens they don't enter another door opens they don't enter if you miss your seasons to a very large extent you will never rise and there are two things about a season that every spiritual man must be conscious of number one i divided it into three bodies every time a new season is coming your way you will discover that your appetites will begin to change find out from any spiritual man he will tell you that's why you have to be spiritually sensitive so that when your appetites begin to change you will know there are certain seasons that are coming your way suddenly hunger for prayer will increase you will know this is not normal sometimes desire for fasting will begin to increase sometimes desire to give will begin to increase sometimes desire to serve will begin to give to increase you just come to a place you are not comfortable sitting down you just want to serve you just want to do something they say no don't worry you say no i want to serve because those burdens are required for you to be able to bet that season in exodus chapter 2 from verse 11 the bible said when moses was come of age something began to happen to him moses started developing a new appetite up until that time he was enjoying the pleasures of egypt but when that season came moses suddenly went out and went to see the camp of the israelites and he said and it came to pass in those days when moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied on an egyptian an egyptian smitten a hebrew one of his brethren and he said when he looked here and there and nobody was seen he held the egyptian and slew him the next day he came again he left the music in the palace he left the buffet in the palace he left the luxury a new appetite had been born and he started servicing that appetite when he looked at the two hebrew boys fighting the next day he said you are brethren so the body that moses found was desire for his brethren and that desire became stronger than the pleasure of egypt imagine if he didn't respond to that prompting and he remained in egypt he would never have become a prophet and moses was not just a prophet in exodus 7 verse 1 god said i have made you a god unto pharaoh at best 
he would have been one of the princes of Egypt. But now, he had risen to a rank. He had become an immortal. So much so that when Jesus was on earth, on the Mount of Transfiguration, in John, Matthew 17, verse 2 and 3, it was Moses and Elijah they sent from heaven to come and give him messages. Which priests of Egypt would outlive that era? Not one. But a man understood how seasons are captured through bodies. Many Christians are bought the hunger, the appetite, and the burden of seasons. That's why they don't go anywhere. There are seasons that come upon you. It becomes like a scene to watch a movie. When you sit down to watch a movie, the Holy Ghost in you will literally be grieved and you will feel it. If you don't respond to the burdens of that season, you will never rise. Those who know me know there was a season of my life. Every day, six to six, I fasted for five years. I never knew God was about to make me a voice to the nations. If there were days I didn't fast in those five years, it was few. But it was a season. I didn't know something was happening in heaven. Election was going on in heaven. And they were looking for new apostles. They were looking for new voices. And God needed me to align. Because my hunger was my way of responding that Lord I'm present. If I ate those seasons, I won't be here talking to you. If you miss your season, what you should have done, you will do it a thousand times outside of season is to see no count. It's just like a farmer going to plant in dry season. If you like, plant 10 bags of rice. Where you should plant 100 seed, no rice will grow. Because you have missed your season. So people are putting extra effort because they are out of season. But the first indicator that a season has opened is body. The second indicator that a season has opened is encounters. Don't trivialize encounters. You went to sleep. You had a dream. The next day the dream continued. You think it was normal. And then you still go back and you relax. You are about to miss up destiny. And the moment they have an encounter, even if that encounter is faint, they will put pressure on that encounter until something divine is born out of it. Go and ask some of the people with the greatest destiny. No angel appeared to them. They were just reading the Bible. And a verse of scripture became real to them. As faint as that encounter is, they will carry that verse and go for 40 days fasting. Just a verse. They will go for 40 days fasting. And when they come back, a great business will be a great business will be born. I am reading the whole Bible. And it got to Psalm 2, verse 8. You have read that scripture a thousand times. But when he read it, something ministered to him. That God can give me nations as an inheritance. The guy went on a long fast. That was the scripture that bettered the wealthiest man. I think he was from Zimbabwe at the time. Strife Masiwa. He was the one who pioneered Econet Mobile. Because he read Psalm 2 verse 8. You and angel appeared to you. All you are doing with it is to brag. You go up and say yes. Two angels came to me yesterday. And you talk away your season. Whereas those seasons are openers. Those encounters are openers into great seasons. When you have encounters, don't talk about them. Go and war with them. Pray with them. Fast with them. Until those encounters become prophecies. It will open you to a great destiny. But people who don't know how men rise, when they have encounters, they trivialize it. Did you not read about Mary? The moment Gabriel spoke to her and told her, your cousin Elizabeth is with child. The next day, she gathered her bags. She was heading to meet Elizabeth. Because she knew if she sat where she was sitting, that encounter can be aborted. And so immediately she went to Elizabeth. The moment Elizabeth saw her, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. The baby in her womb leaped for joy and she began to prophesy, Why has the mother of my Lord come to see me? When she finished prophesying, the Spirit entered Mary. Mary too, for the first time, began to prophesy. What would have happened if she remained where she had that encounter? Probably nothing would have happened. Too many of us are sitting on supernatural encounters. That's why we have not risen. Dangerous encounters. Some of you hearing me here, you have seen the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. But you are still where you are sitting because you did nothing about it. Meanwhile, the encounter that bets an apostle is an encounter with Jesus. Anybody who tells you he's an apostle, he has seen Jesus. You will not find any apostle 
who has never encountered Jesus. Even Paul said, have I not seen the Lord? Ask anybody who says he's an apostle. He can tell you where he met Jesus. And there are many people with apostolic mantles, but they have not gone anywhere. You know what they are doing with it? They are priding with their friends. Jesus came to me. I saw in Jamaica. I saw in Gabriel. And they are irrelevant in their destiny because they didn't follow the demands of the encounters they had. When you want to rise in your season, you must do something about your encounters. And finally, warfare. Most great seasons come with battles. Go and ask Moses, he will tell you. The moment his season manifested, Pharaoh became his enemy. In fact, he ran for his life. It's not every warfare you bind demons for. When certain warfare begin to come to you, go back to your closet and ask the Holy Ghost questions. Lord, what are you saying? Because sometimes we are too distracted. So the only way God will allow us to focus on our destiny is when he allows warfare. Suddenly everybody is gossiping you. Suddenly everybody is, is, is bitter against you. Suddenly your name is all over the place. Don't fight. Withdraw. And find out what is going on. What is going on? Perhaps the Joseph mantle is about to rest on you. Because when certain mantles come, they attract warfare. So most of your warfares are a summon to the secret place to ask God questions so that he can give you the compass of your destiny. But if you don't know how seasons work, when they fight you, you say, these people don't know who they are joking with. I will give it back to them. Bumper to bumper. And what you don't know is that you are aborting a season. Our battle is not with men. It's with spirits. Men are only puppets that spirits use. And so if the spirit is using people to envy you, don't be distracted. If it's using spirits to lie, men to lie against you, don't be distracted. Find out what season have I entered. Is it the Davidic season? Is it the Joseph season? Is it the Moses season? Is it the Elijah season? Is it the John the Baptist season? Because every season has a signature in the spirit. And most of your seasons will come with battles. There are certain seasons that come to you. Suddenly, all your finances shut down. You are looking around. No money is coming from anywhere. And you are wondering what is going on. They are drawing your attention to something. You are too carried away by pleasure. And so what God is doing is that he is turning your attention to something eternal. And so when you try all you know to do and nothing is working, withdraw and ask questions. This is why the prayer of inquiry is too important in the college of lifting. Father, what are you saying? And God will tell you, you need to pray for two years because there is a man to come in on your life. You need stamina to host it. Did you not read about John? He said he was in the wilderness. Luke 180 until the day of a showing forth unto Israel. I'm telling you how men rise. And I'm not talking about spiraling up like a star. I'm talking about rising that even if hell rises up against you, they can't stop you. If a man rises genuinely, battles makes his glory sharper. Nothing can pull him down. He becomes the representation of the signature of God. The reason you find some people spira up and spira down is because they didn't pass through this protocol. They just came alive by coincidence. Came alive by chance. When a man rises genuinely, if you fight him, you are wasting your time. Try to shut him down. You are wasting your destiny. Many people fail in destiny because they wasted their third your life. So what you need to do is to be sensitive. He said the sons of Isaac are. They had understanding of times and seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. First Chronicles 12 22. You need to discern your spawn to bodies. To you interpret your work. Faith without works is dead. In a company, go appear. It will happen. God shows you you are an apostle to the nation. Start preaching in your neighborhood. People can say you are ambitious. Go for hospital visitation. In fact, sometimes God told me I will be a voice to the nations. Convey school. The woman said all oh, this religion. I want to lose them. And she was defending her business. Meanwhile, that was a Christian. When I left there, my heart broke. Whatever people say, don't move us. Our skin is now. They think you'll be offended. You'll come out the next day more fireful than the previous day. Because this skin is now thick. There were times when I was rejected and I would, my heart would be broken. After two years, God inspired me. 
I started again, but this time I left primary school and went to secondary school. And the way I entered secondary school, I entered now as a teacher. So when I'm teaching chemistry, after a while we pause. When I call an atom, I will now use an atom to teach about the invincible realm. Since you cannot see an atom, an atom is not the only thing you cannot see. There is about Gabriel. When I start talking about the angelic host, then ch children, they will become interested. Their ears will open. Then I will come to Jesus. When I finish, I'll do a tackle. They'll be healed. They'll be saved. The next day, I enter another class. I'm teaching. They'll say, why are you feeling pain on your head? He will shout. How did you know? I'm having a headache. I said, don't worry. It's called the prophetic. And so I begin to tell them about radiation. The way the prophetic works. And then I start talking to them about knowing things without reading. That to read, but you can also... At that level, even the principal cannot kick me out. Goes with fire because I'm, it's not my fault that I was teaching and the atmosphere changed. Sometimes when I'm talking, I'm talking, then I'll just call Elijah. A student is called Elijah. Then I'll tell him, Do you know the tribe of Elijah? Do you know about the Tishbites? <laughs> and then I'll start talking about the possibility of calling down fire from heaven. Fire, fire. And I enter here, I enter there, and students are cheering. My class, nobody misses it. Meanwhile, the way I teach, I don't carry lecture notes. I give them notes of 20 pages from my head. Equations. I'm solving things. So they are looking at me. They say, what is this? I say, there is an elevated realm in the Holy Ghost. There are some teachers that use notes. There are other teachers that angels whisper to. I'm giving notes, I'm giving notes. They will be copying notes from my head. They will go and tell their friends. Before you know, the whole hostel is on fire. They said there's a teacher. This man was with me there now. They used to call him man of God. They said there's a teacher here. There's a teacher. He doesn't use notes. So when I'm in SS3A, people are coming from B. I said, no, there's a teacher in your class. Go back. Go back to your class. They started loving God. They started loving God because you must take action. That was why we went to many secondary schools. Not just because of the salary. We needed to take action. And when God saw that we knew how to maximize season, he opened more seasons. Because the, the branch that produces fruit, he prones that it may produce much more. The secret of rice. People will look at you and think you just appeared. When it has to do with manifestation, you can appear suddenly. But there is a process. There is a process. There is a massive process. And part of it is your ability to discern your season and to take the right action. The fourth thing about lifting is humility. First Peter 5, verse 6 to 7. It says, God will exalt the humble, but he will resist the proud. These are powerful principles. Listen, the devil will always want to inspire you to prove a point. You don't have to. God is the one that proves points on your behalf. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. James 4.10 In due season, he said, God will exhort you. In Proverbs 29.23, he said, A man's pride shall bring him low. He said, But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. When you find men who are being lifted and being lifted and being lifted, check at the foundation of their life is a robust technology of humility. In Luke 14, 11, it says, For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and him that humbled himself shall be exalted. That is why in Luke 1, 52, when Mary was speaking, it said, He had put down the mighty from their seat, and he has exalted them that are of low degree. If where you want to go to is the top, the technology is to face down. As you face down in humility, the God that lifts men will by his mighty hand lift you up. And when he does, nobody can bring you down. Nobody under heaven. Humility is a key to rising. Our generation is too proud and arrogant. And you see, there are two dimensions of pride. 
there is the arrogant pride and there's the subtle pride the people who are subtly proud are the worst type of proud people you see them they say it's well don't worry okay sir yes sir you don't know what's in their heart the day they are offended they will shock you what will come out of their mouth will let you know that that thing they were doing was a shadow of religion in fact when you find somebody who is so eager about showing that he's humble leave him alone that is pride in disguise he wants everybody to know that he's humble he's overly see leave him alone it's a technology of pride the way you check is let him do something don't appreciate him and you'll be shocked how offended he will be or wait let somebody offend him and see how difficult it will be for him to forgive people who are subtly proud you may never dictate it there are few ways of dictating them number one when you don't appreciate them they are highly offended number two when they are offended they hardly forgive when you find a man who cannot forgive the foundation is pride and then the third way you dictate them is that it's difficult for them to work with others they think they know too much they are the one telling you it's okay it's okay but they can't even allow their leader dictate what happens and god does not read your action he reads your heart first he said men look on the outward he said but god looks at the heart if you want god to lift you you must humble your heart in humility the fifth way for lifting men is by wisdom when god wants to raise you up he will bless you with wisdom there is something about wisdom that lifts men to the top in proverbs 23 24 verse 3 and 4 it said through wisdom is an house builded by understanding it is established and by knowledge all the chambers are filled with good things so one of the way god establishes a man or a system is by wisdom they do not read about solomon the way his kingdom was established was not by military might imagine the drastic shift in operation david his father was a warrior fought 66 battles and didn't lose any the reason david was mighty was because of strength and then david switched over to solomon and suddenly there was no battle and solomon will, solomon will achieve the same peace that david was able to achieve through warfare but by wisdom in fact in solomon's time he didn't just rise up he was established with great wealth people came just to hear his wisdom in our world today if you want the mighty to associate with you come with wisdom nobody can despise wisdom wisdom is one of the men many people don't rise because they don't know how to deal with men the second aspect of wisdom god will give you is with resources there are some people the resources that you translate to the arising they waste it who told you that you cannot save as a copper who told you that you cannot save or invest as a student it is not about where you are in life it's about the operation of wisdom that has become a culture if you cannot save with the little you have if you cannot invest with the little you have when you have much you still waste it it's not about how much it's about how wise and so wisdom is a key for lifting that's why james said if you lack wisdom pray to god that giveth liberally and unbraided not let him give you wisdom he said wisdom is the principal thing by all means get wisdom and he said in all thy getting get understanding don't see any great person and assume his anointing and power alone there are many anointed men who are wasting when you see systems working check there's a wisdom at work every success is a manifestation of wisdom in motion you can be more gifted than everybody yet languish in obscurity because your operation is not encoded with wisdom and then number six the way god lifts men is through prophecy he said the house kept growing by the prophesying of Haggai the priest and Zacharias the son of Edo. Every time prophecies go forth, men must rise. In Genesis 49 verse 10, when Jacob wanted to establish his children, 
it was not with donkeys and camels it was with prophetic words he said gather around me you sons of jacob i will tell you the things that will befall you and in verse 10 of that scripture he said the scepter shall not depart from judah neither the lawgiver from in between his feet until shiloh comes and he made judah a king forever by prophecy even dry bones can become a mighty army by prophecy in ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 9 he said the hand of the lord was upon me and he carried me to the valley of dry bones and he said indeed the bones were dry and he said the lord spoke to him mortal man can this bone live he said only thou knowest he said prophesy and he began to prophesy bones joined to bone flesh came upon bones the wind came filled them and an exceeding great army rose up see nothing lifts men faster than prophecy if you want to rise if there's no prophet over your life or god become the prophet over your life wake up in the morning carry scriptures shoot them into your future i am the head not the tail greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world everything i do prospers do it for two months you will be shocked how your life will move forward because your life is waiting for words it say carry with you words the problem with many people is that they are waiting for a prophet to call them out in a stadium and say look at this man this is the next apostle to the generation when i was growing there was a time i became offended i will go for meeting the person sitting by my left they will call him and give him word of knowledge i will lift my hand i will tiptoe so that they will see me sometimes i will come to the front when they say in jesus name i will say amen so that the man of god will see me i didn't know that it was not with physical eyes they gave all my friends prophecies all of them will go for meetings sometimes they will call and say ah there's an apostolic horn and the person will lift his hand after that meeting the person will start walking like a man of god and those of us who never receive wars we will be hoping that one day god will remember us when we go for another meeting they will call the other one and say i see that you have prophetic dreams watch out in the couple of months your horn will be exalted i will look around and say uh -uh, are these prophets fake or is something covering my own destiny all my life it's only once a prophet called me and gave me a word and what he told me say you are not a pastor <laughs> my heart started beating you are not a pastor he said listen to me he said you are an apostle you are a prophet you are an evangelist that was the first day i had i had some soccer me too i started going home like an apostle but see the point i'm making when that man gave me prophecy i was already manifesting do you know why because god blessed me I met a man called Pastor Chris with a kilometer. I saw a man that nobody prophesied to. I saw a man that nobody laid hands on. I saw a man that was rejected and despised. But there was something he knew. Every time we met him, he will say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He will say, whoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. He kept prophesying to himself. And so I learned it. Me too, I will carry verses of scripture and I'll be declaring. Ask my friends, they will tell you. When we finish from prayer meeting, everybody is going home and prophesying. I will tell them, we will shake this world. We will shake this world. Sometimes they will follow me to the road. We will stand on the road and I'll be telling them how we will go from nation to nation. How we will go from city to city. How we will preach the gospel with signs and with wonders. There was no prophet prophesying. And so we took responsibility to prophesy over our destiny if you keep your mouth shut your destiny will be short dr paul and said a short mouth is a short destiny you want to rise you rise by the words you speak he said put me in remembrance of my words he said by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned and so the sixth secret for rising is to choke yourself with the word of God. Saturate your future with the word. It says, if the heavens be full of rain, of necessity, 
they must send water back to the earth. Finally, how do men rise? By the ministry of a sent man. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, he said they sent his word to Jacob. He lightened upon Israel. Many times, when God wants to lift men, he sends men to them. Paul encountered Jesus, Acts chapter 9, from verse 4 to verse 6, in his glory. And Jesus told him, go into the city. You'll be told what you must do. And Jesus went in verse 10 and troubled another man called Ananias to go and go to ordain Paul into ministry. How can a man meet Jesus in glory and still need to meet another man? The reason many of us never rise is our arrogance. We think everything begins and ends with us. Some years ago, I thought to myself that the world was missing, not having met me until God opened my eyes that there are men that carry things. Even if you come to heaven, you will go back to earth to find them. Because Paul saw Jesus in his glory, he needed to encounter Ananias. Do you know Ananias said, Lord, why will I go to this man who is persecuting the church? God said, just go. And the moment he entered, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord that you met on your way here have sent me to you. He said, now rise up. And that was how he laid hands on him. Scales fell off his eyes. He began to see and a great apostolic ministry was born. Does it not shock you that the Ananias that ordained Paul was not known? He didn't have a title. He was called a disciple. Our arrogance is that a man will sit with the person to open his destiny, but is waiting for an apostle from another nation to come and lay hands on him. He is waiting for a father of faith to lay hands on him and let him be snapped so that the whole world will know I have met many fathers and I don't despise desiring them to pray for you. But I'm telling you, don't miss the man God has sent to you. You may be more anointed than that man. You may be more popular than that man. But your destiny is at his mercy. If he speaks, your destiny will open. If men are to rise, men must be sent to them. You saw the story of Samuel and Saul. God wanted to raise Saul. But God had to manipulate somewhere until he met and uh, manipulate Saul until he met somewhere. The same thing happened to David. He had to meet somewhere for him to rise. There are many kings that have never been ordained because they have despised their, their people who should ordain them. They think their soul is blessed the better. And there are two categories of people you must honor. Number one, they are your parents. He say honor your father and your mother. He said, this is the first commandment with promise. He said, if you do it, your days on earth shall be long. Ephesians 6, verse 2 and 3. And number 2, they are spiritual men that God sends your way. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall ye prosper. You know what this generation is doing? The devil is raising men to paint every man of God as fake. So that a day will come that what if all these men of God withdraw? What will become of the body? So it is the light of God they are fighting. I know they are fake people. And the Holy Ghost will keep giving us discernment to know them and to avoid them. There are certain men that carry your ordination. Don't because of the norm of society miss those men when they pass. The Bible says be careful to receive men. It says some have missed even angels because they built the culture of despising men and this thing does not begin and end with time in hebrews 13 17 he said obey them that have rule over you he said when they give account of you so that they will give it with joy he said for it is profitable unto you honor men some of them carry your next season even those of us who are ministers here there are men who carry our next season and we know I'm not talking about the religion of running after everybody. I'm talking about true discernment, finding those who bear the key of the land. When I came into Abuja, God led me to a woman called Mommy Sarah or Maku. You need to see a woman of stature. When I finished preaching, he said, Come, my son. Who, who, who is calling you apostle? Come. <laughs> see, when, when, when you meet people who have stature, it's beautiful. When she started talking, nobody told me I knelt down. And she came audaciously and laid hands on me. And she said, I opened this city to you. <laughs> Don't joke. Oh. You will tie yourself in one location. I opened 
this season to you. And we started from day one with ease up to today. Up to today with ease. Because a woman said, I opened this city to you. As if that was not enough. I went to the place of prayer and God showed me a vision of Dr. Pastor Paul. Really. In that season, as God will have it, I didn't even know how to access him. And it's not in my repertoire to start pursuing men. I prefer to search them in the spirit. But God was leading me to a man. It was that same season that he asked of me. Where's this young man? I hear of him. Tell him to come and see me. Really? Immediately I went there. I prepared myself. And when I showed up, the man laid hands on me. My body melted. Me that thought I have interacted with glory. <laughs> Intensities are different too. The man laid hands. It was not in the service, in his office. Take that power. I stood up. I was walking out. I collapsed. Uh -uh. I, I checked myself. I stood well. Uh -uh. I have traveled in the spirit. What's going on here? I have contacted some dimensions. I have touched some ways of glory. I was walking. I fell again. Ah, uh, Doozy had to hold me. And that was how they carried me from the office. They told me, go and do a three days fast. Come back. After fasting for three days, he took me to the altar. And that was when he spoke as a patriarch. He said, every, every tongue that have risen against you, I cancel it. <laughs> you don't know secrets. You don't know secrets. Do you know the battles that I have fought in two years? I would have crashed. But a man of rank. He said, every tongue that have risen against you, I cancel it. He said, every gang up against you, I scatter it. He said, every negative desire about your destiny, I stop it. And he was giving prophecies, commandments, and laws in the spirit. When he was done, he said, now, hear this. I plant into your destiny new dimensions. I open this city to you. I write a commandment. Go forward and prosper. I was on the floor. He emptied a bottle of oil on my head. And when he finished, he walked away. He doesn't need to be there. He has finished his work. See, if you despise men, you are finished. That's why some of the battles that should have pulled off down, when they come against us, they see another man too. Because when a man puts his spiritual credibility on you, his angels begin to defend you. It's a law in the spirit. See, some people think why we honor men is because of relevance by association. Church is not politics. Relevance by association may happen in the world, not in the kingdom. In this kingdom, it is the spirit of God that he takes from a man and puts on another man. If God does not invest that grace on you, if you like, hug them everywhere, it will translate to nothing. Even the men of God, some of them, their children don't carry what other people have received from them. They are children that carry their DNA and their names. Because there's nothing like relevance by association in the kingdom. It's transference of spirits. He said, get Joshua, a man in whom is the spirit. Lay your hands upon him. I will take some of the honor that is upon your life and put on him. That's how men rise.